Uh, what's that old adage I'm thinking about? A good landing starts with a good approach. That's the one. Here's your flight fix. Welcome to the Cirrus Approach Flight Fix, the bite-sized flight training show dedicated to pilots who never stop learning. You know, there aren't a whole lot of phrases used in aviation or screamed more by flight instructors than stabilized approach. It's pretty much the reason for every good landing and I'd say it's missing from every bad one. Consistently committing to flying a stabilized approach and even more so identifying when it's missing can be a little more difficult. So call this episode our public service announcement from the Cirrus Approach staff. We're gonna do a bit of soul searching on this one and really kind of commit or recommit to flying a stabilized approach. We'll stop just short of taking an oath. And we're gonna look at how being stable can provide real tangible, 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 how being stable can provide benefits that we can see and feel. So let's do it to the imaginary hangar. So we'll dig a little deeper into each element of a stabilized approach during an upcoming episode, believe me. But for now, let's discuss what motivates us. As pilots? Yeah, what motivates us as pilots to execute a stabilized approach. The simple action of identifying and committing to flying within the constraints of defined stabilized approach criteria provides a consistent framework for an otherwise ever-changing maneuver. Those criteria establish that baseline. They give us something to shoot for, really a target, and they provide an element of predictability during the most critical part of every approach. And this predictability, those measurable criteria, that's what helps us to identify the second that an approach is starting to go not well. So during your day-to-day -day operations, adhering to targeted approach values will lead to more consistent, smooth landings. So making the approach and landing more comfortable for you and any of your passengers. Landing incidents and accidents occur in every single category of airplane flown by pilots with experience levels that are all over the place. 10,000 hour pilot, doesn't matter. Statistics show that they're still prone to an accident or incident occurring during the landing phase. So the point is, most landing incidents and accidents could have been avoided if the pilot hadn't cut those corners on that base to final torn. Oh. If the pilot hadn't cut those corners on their base to final turn or their short final, and if they'd only taken the extra seconds to fly the same approach profile that they're used to, or when things just weren't going right, if they'd only respected the realities of what had now become an unstable approach. The bottom line here is, set yourself up with a solid game plan for flying a stabilized approach. You'll be tempted from time to time to deviate from this plan, but remember a few seconds saved here or there may not be worth the challenges of flying a new and unpredictable final approach path that you're just not used to. Following a consistent approach profile will produce stabilized approaches and smooth results, and that's what it's all about. It's about putting yourself and your airplane in a position where small, smooth corrections are all that's needed all the way down to the pavement. And it's not to say that every unstable approach will result in an accident or incident because that's just not true. But there's just no denying. I, as a pilot, really want to do everything I can to avoid a bumpy, long, floating, embarrassing, or just otherwise generally ugly landing. One that bruises my ego, makes my passengers nervous, or causes me a sleepless night or two while I play back that cringe-worthy landing over and over again in my head. And when you're out there on a daily basis, here's what you need to remember. The final approach phase rarely ever happens in a vacuum. Every pattern, every approach, every landing, they're different because of all those external factors that can be thrown at you, and that's also part of what makes landing so much fun. But if you're asked to turn base early or you're left high and fast, you need to recognize and account for these variables early so that you're always achieving those baseline stabilized approach numbers by, according to the Cirrus Aircraft Flight Operations Manual, by 500 feet. And your reward? A smooth, silky, predictable landing that will draw the attention of your passengers in a good way and in a thanks for being so awesome and professional type of way. And if you just can't get everything tightened up by 500 feet, just go around, it's not a big deal. Give it another whirl. Say you saw a coyote on the runway or something. Yay, you'll be the hero. Don't forget, we're gonna get all up into the stabilized approach criteria and really break down each element on an upcoming episode. 
So in the meantime, this has been your Cirrus Approach public service announcement. We're asking that you commit to flying a stabilized approach every time. And if you're like me, as a great first step, get someone in the cockpit with you on a flight or two. Make it your local CSIP. That's the person who can really hold your feet to the fire, or the rudder pedals as it were. Have them really breathe down your neck. You'll be able to get into the habit of tightening those approach tolerances, and it'll help to renew your commitment to flying a stabilized approach each and every time. As always, we'd love for you to follow us on the great big internet. And if you have some awesome idea for content that you just love for us to cover, or for any comments, questions, biting critiques, or loving praise, send an email to learning at cirrusaircraft.com. I'm Michael Goulian, here at the greatest aviation celebration on earth. I got to where I am in my aviation career by training, training, training. Remember, learning is a lifestyle and we'll see you at the next fix.